This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome back to the September edition of MWF Ultra as we celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Millennium Wrestling Federation. I'm joined once again here by Commissioner Von Johnson in studio and on the telephone, the Millennium Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion, Sudden Impact, Dylan Gage. Dylan, thank you for joining us here on Ultra. Thank you very much, Mr. Milani, and what's going on, Doc? It's good to always speak to the champ, baby. Dylan Cage. As we just saw a wonderful montage video put together over the past five years of highlights of this promotion, and you're in it quite a bit. Almost three years now you've been MWF heavyweight champion. In a day and age when championship belts mean very little to people, how have you maintained the heavyweight championship for so long, defeating some of the greatest athletes in New England and even with the likes of Al Snow, some in the world? I mean, maybe three years on top, that was no accident. Dylan Cage does everything on purpose. I mean, you have to realize this, when you train hard, you work hard, brother, you got to play hard, too. Championship belts are the greatest thing in wrestling. That's what you're there for. If you're not there to be on top, what are you going to be there for? No, that's not the way that everybody looks at it. No, you were already having a successful championship reign, but then back last November at Soul Survivor 3, the biggest fan reunion and independent wrestling show in all of New England each year, you added Percy Pringle III, Paul Barrett to the mix, is the leader of your trifecta, along with Hoochie player Danny Jackson, Jimmy Jack Cash. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, Percy Pringle has got 20 plus years in the business. Any advice he could give to us, I mean, it's beneficial to all of us. Do you feel like he's giving you enough attention recently? He's been busy with his Gulf South wrestling promotion down in Alabama. He hasn't been by your side as much as he has in recent months. Do you have any hard feelings about that? No, we have no feelings on that at all. I mean, Percy's doing his job or we would not keep him around. Well, that's an interesting way to keep look at it. So you are still the boss of the trifecta, in other words. Always will, always have been. Well, that's very interesting, Commissioner. Well, you know, speaking of keeping around, I understand that since you've been a champion, you had one of your alumni, uh, shall we say your old uh, valet, Talia, um, who was actually, you got smart and you didn't want to keep it around, even though I understand her nickname was uh, Kirby Vacuum because she was able to, um, her powerful sucking motion was as powerful as a Kirby Vacuum, but eventually, as you know from being the professional that you are, if they don't produce or they don't keep up their professional standard, Dylan Cage says bye-bye, and she's bye-bye, and I'm very happy for it, because I've seen that since you've gotten rid of that excess baggage, your career and your strength and energy is on an all-time high right now, which is, I congratulate you for that. No, you're absolutely right. I am all I need. Well, look at some of the athletes he's defeated, Commissioner Von Johnson, Slick Wagner Brown, Latin Fury Luis Ortiz, Todd Hansen, Al Snow, Die Hard Eddie Edwards. I mean, it's a list from top to bottom, and... Dylan, I mean, how have you retained the championship? It always hasn't been through legal methods, mind you, but the fact that three years you've been able to keep that championship belt across your waist, it says an awful lot for you. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've heard you call me many times the thinking man's wrestler. I take a lot of pride in that. I design each and every one of my matches, and I have a game plan when we go in there. We don't go from that game plan once, you know, whatsoever. That's why we stay on top. That's why we're going to be the that's where we're going to be the best. Well, we have some breaking news. I don't even know if you know this yet, Dylan, but earlier tonight, Commissioner Von Johnson met with the MWF production team, and next month on the October edition of MWF Ultra, it is going to be a tribute program to you, one hour of Dylan Cage matches and highlights and interviews to honor your three years as champion, Commissioner. Where did you come up with this idea? Well, you know what? I looked around, and I look and always constantly trying to upgrade and improve our system. And I said, what better way can we celebrate the true champion that we have in Dylan Cage than to give him a good special that is one solid hour of his expertise, his challenges that I have thrown and we've all thrown at him, and he comes out a winner every time. I think he should be you know, recognized as a winner that he is. 
Well, we've, I don't think we've ever had a tribute special for anyone that's been alive, at least. No, a couple of dead ones, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Von Johnson. Dylan Cage, as you head now into your, I guess, the beginning of the fourth year as champion, what are you focused on here in the MWF as far as retaining that championship and any goals you might have along the way? But to be perfectly honest with you, the only person that I am focused on is me and the trifecta. All we're working on is staying at the top of the game and being the best we can possibly be. And, brother, that's not conceded. That's just convinced. And break any rules necessary along the way, you might say. Some would say that. Some would say that. Well, again, you will be known for a lengthy run, but, however, some will know a very rule-breaking tenure as champion. And I'm sure, Commissioner Von Johnson, you seem to like the people that break all the rules. And you know, Whatever it takes to keep you on top, some of us... Like good politicians, we have to bend the rules to make the rules. Dylan Cage, any final... Professional, professional wrestling, Dan, you got to realize it's the toughest sport in the world. It's oh, it... no holds barred. How can there be a breaking of a rule? Well, th th no, there are rules in the ring, and you happen to break just about every one of them. Absolutely. Well, at least he's honest about it. I guess you have to give him some credit. Dylan Cage, again, you've been a superstar with the MWF now, dating back all the way back to 2001. Commissioner, someone that obviously you want to keep here in the MWF for the foreseeable future, I imagine? I think that, you know what, I always like the winners, baby. And I'll tell you, whatever it takes to stay on top, you know, <laughs> April Hunter knows about that. And, you know, whatever it takes to do on top or the bottom or the sideways with her, Dylan Cage is the man right now. Dylan Cage, we're just about out of time on this program. It's a loaded edition of Ultra. We still have our main event with diehard Eddie Edwards and Louis Ortiz for the TV title. Any final thoughts about your first five years here in the MWF, along with your three years as champion? Brother, it's been a great time. I'm going to stay on top. I'm going to be number one. That's really all there is to it. It's as simple as that. And speaking of... What is that? Dylan Cage, it was a pleasure to have you here on this program. And speaking of tributes, Commissioner, here's a surprise. Mr. Vacuum Cleaner himself has decided to replay his music video, and we'll be taking a look at that after this brief timeout. Thank you.